Headphones are recommended to hear the sound of the drums. We're going to talk about some new tongue drum designs and what happens when you put one Helmholtz resonator inside another Helmholtz resonator. Hermann von Helmholtz was a German physicist and physician who lived from 1821 to 1894. In his book on the sensations of tone, he makes small spheres tuned to exact frequencies, which were later dubbed Helmholtz resonators. Helmholtz found that while sounding a pure tone, the resonators that were tuned to the overtone series of that tone would ring sympathetically. This marked the first physical proof and documentation of the overtone series. A true Helmholtz resonator is a rigid body with a neck. Helmholtz developed an equation that accurately describes the resonant frequency of a resonator based on its volume and the length and size of its neck. Guitar bodies do not have rigid tops and backs, and the sound hole doesn't have much of a neck, which is why they are only sort of a Helmholtz resonator, though many of the principles do apply. Now a tongue drum is, is a Helmholtz resonator of sorts. I'll talk about this one first. What I found is, when I make a drum that has its own contained airspace, it sounds really good. Here's what it looks like on the inside. This one's a little larger than this one. You can see they have two chambers. There's the drum itself. You can tune them by removing material from the end and the tip. I haven't tuned this one yet. And as you can see, I've left the end, direct, after you close it, I leave the end open so there is air going out. What I was doing here is like a bottle. A bottle is a Helmholtz resonator. When you extend the neck on a bottle, you lower the pitch. So what I'm trying to do is to tune these air cavities to be an appropriate airspace for each drum so it sounds the best. This one not closed doesn't sound very good yet at all. Probably can't even hear it, but when it's closed, you will be. The drum itself, well, the drum itself looks like this. See, so in there. Whoa, it looks like someone needs to go to the doctor. Yeah, I know. That's what it looks like. If you have Peyronie's disease, ask your doctor if Zyflex is right for you. Form follows function. We really wanted to have this raised area here so that when the sides come in, you have access to the drum. It stick, it'll stick above the side. This is going to float inside the guitar. This is not going to touch the side. It's just going to be kind of suspended in there by the head block and a brace on the side. It's also worth noting that the braces front, top, and back are not going to touch these either, of course, because that would screw everything up. So, so what does that do? If you put something like this inside of a guitar body, what's going to happen? I have two identical bodies, as close as I can get them. They are the same depth, the tail, and at the neck. They're both made from mahogany. Um, these are mahogany second grade sets. They've got knots and other things. They both have these rather unexciting Sika spruce tops, which were, as I thinned them down, I tested them to the same deflection levels, so they're the exact same stiffness. They tap to the same note. The sound hole is the exact same size, same position on both. They both have a single X brace, as well as on the back. The back has a single X brace. All we're trying to do is to kind of hold the, the arches. We're not going to ever put strings on these. So it doesn't need any more bracing than that. First, I attach the tops to each. Carefully tap the tops and adjust the X braces till the tops sounded exactly the same. Got the back sounding exactly the same. Put the backs on. All right. This one does not have drums. This one does have drums. So what do the drums sound like inside? And you can see this is something smaller than this, but similar to this, it's in here like that.
That's what's going on. And sounds like this. Really good. But yes, we have a box inside of our sound box. A box with holes in the back of it. So it has the air all has access. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take these over to the computer and we're going to use Audacity and we're going to measure the frequency response of these boxes. The one without drums and the one with drums. And we do that by holding it up to a mic and tapping where, about where the bridge would be. That frequency there is the resonant frequency of the chamber inside here. And that's what we want to make sure that we want to see what happens when you put a box inside of a box. What happens to the outer box? This is the guitar body without the drums. This is the guitar body with the drums. I held the bodies up with a microphone in front of the sound hole, tapped in the bridge location in order to measure the resonant frequency of the guitar body itself. So when we look at this is three taps in a row, plot the spectrum, and we see that the initial peak, this would be the resonant frequency of the guitar body, is at 96 hertz. And that's pretty good. 95 would be ideal for this guitar size. It's 15 inch body. For the guitar body with the drums inside, same thing, plot the spectrum. See that the initial frequency is at 102. It's a little bit higher. This graph shows the two spectrums from the guitar body with the drums and the guitar body without the drums overlaid on top of each other. The blue line represents the guitar without drums, the orange line the guitar with drums, and we're going up to about the first 350 hertz of response here. So this is that initial peak that we were talking about, the main air resonance of the guitar bodies, and we can see this one is peaking around, this, this peak here is at 96, and this one was at 102 I believe. Beyond that, we can see that they really do kind of adhere to each other. This peak, we'll talk about later, is represents the frequency of the top, the top plate of the guitars, the face. So our guitar with the drum inside had a slightly higher frequency. But let's keep in mind that what we've got going on here is very similar to a sound port in the side of a guitar. Remember, this has holes in the bottom, and there's slots running into here, so there is air escaping here. And the shift in frequency is about what you get with a sound board. So what we're going to do next, prove that out, is we're going we're to tape those shut, and then we're going to tap it again and see what we get. I'm going to do a few layers of tape here because I really want to seal the air off. Here we go. Let's go tap it again. So back in Audacity again, this track down here shows the guitar body with the drums in it with the tape covering the holes in the sides. Plot the spectrum. And our initial peak is now at 96. Let's look at all three plots on top of each other. So back to our graph, we've added a third line. This red one is the guitar body with the tape covering the holes in the sides. That's the body with the drums in it. Orange is the body with the drums in it without the tape on it. Blue is the body without drums in it. So we can see that this initial air resonance of the body with no drums and the body with drums with tape are lining up. So here's the body with the orange and red are the body with the drums. And here, they line up, whereas the body with no drums is a little bit to the right. This area represents the guitar top, the spruce top. So when we have drums mounted to the side, we can see that we get a little bit of a lower shift. This is a slightly lower frequency than the body without, without drums. Now the reason for that, if you've read Trevor Gore and Gerard Gillet's books, on guitar building, they talk about adding mass to the side in order to lower the frequency of the top. And 
That's what we've done, in effect. The drums are mounted at the head block and also affixed to the side down in the lower bout. So I would say about half of the mass of the drums is impacting the side here. So I think that's how we can account for this shift. And it's interesting that they line up perfectly right there. So with the side taped off, air blocked, we ended up with very similar results. Now we can't have tape on the finished guitar, so we want to get the same kind of 95 hertz range body resonance. What we'll have to do is make the sound hole slightly smaller. And we know that we will get, for each one millimeter in reduction, uh, we will get a, a drop in frequency by around a hertz. I think it's 0.65 to a hertz in that kind of range. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to target it on that. What we'll actually do is make it smaller than we need it and then slowly open it up until it matches where we want it to be. So there you have it. It may not seem intuitive that you can have a whole box inside of a guitar and have it not change the fundamental kind of sound of the guitar we're all talking about is air here, right? The top is where the sound is happening. The top is not touching this. It's all the same amount of air because the air has access to the inside of the drum. As if it was filled with water, it'd be about the same, right? So that's how it works. How much do these weigh? This one weighs a pound and a half, about 685 grams currently. When it gets to the bottom, a little, tiny little, little bit more, but not much. So, you know, it's, it's not a huge weight increase. It's, it's noticeable, it's a pound and a half, but it's not eight pounds or something ridiculous like that. Sasquatchy, I understand that you want to do the outro music today. Yes, I would actually. I've been practicing. Will you play it with me? Oh, I most certainly will. <laughs> Thank you.